Hi, I'm so glad you've taken the time to join me for an exciting new series regarding this particular time in history that we're going through. Uh, for the next few weeks, we're going to talk to you about the pandemic perspective, uh, the prophetic, the practical, and the positive. So I want you to share with your friends, like if, if you will, comment also always on the pandemic perspective. Welcome to the pandemic perspective with David G. Evans. The practical, the positive, and the prophetic. So today I want to start out with um, this conversation for the next few minutes. We want to start in 2 Samuel chapter 24. Uh, go all the way down to verse 25 and then we'll begin our conversation today on the pandemic perspective. 2 Samuel 24, 25 says, And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land, and the plague was stayed from Israel. One more time. And David built there an altar unto the Lord. Relationship offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, sacrifice with a purpose. So the Lord was entreated for the land, prayed for the land, and the plague, which was upon the land, was stayed or stopped or taken away from or released from its grip on Israel. Now, I want you to understand that the word pandemic and the word plague are somewhat synonymous in the Bible in a few ways that I'm going to show you today. The word pandemic translates all people. So the pandemic that we're seeing now, COVID-19 going around the world, is not concerned with ethnicities, not concerned with uh, geographic boundaries, not concerned with ages, uh, does not worry about the language that you speak. It is an all people condition. Now you and I remember that uh, when Adam and Eve failed in the garden, the disease of sin was spread throughout the world. So what men call a pandemic, God calls a plague. What men call a pandemic, God calls a plague. So we want to take a, a look at how this affects, especially those people of faith, people that are spiritual. We want to talk about how this plague, what is God saying to us? Now, we all know from Scripture that the Bible says judgment begins at the house of God. I need you to put that in the back of your mind. And uh, as somewhat of a resounding or a sounding board, uh, is this plague about the church? No. Is this pandemic about the church specifically? No. But in the midst of the plague, God is asking the church a few questions. And what are those questions and why is God doing it this way? All right. Turn with me to Isaiah 53 for just a second. And I want to show you something. Um, Isaiah 53. And when we get there, I want you to go down to about verse 5, I think, and you'll see some familiar words. And I want to uh, share that with you, and then we're going to get right into our discussion on Isaiah 53, 5, and what this looks like. Now, we go down to Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Look at the commonality of the transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Look at the commonality. Uh, of our inward crookedness, the chastisement of our peace, the punishment for our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Now, we're not going to get into um, the, um, the issue of whether that's just physical healing or spiritual healing, but I'm going to present to you biblical truth in the upcoming sessions, the upcoming weeks, that the healing that Jesus and the prophet is talking about, the one that God was facilitating, is both a two-dimensional healing both from the disease of sin, the plague of sin, and the disease of our bodies. By his stripes, we are healed. So we understand what pandemic means, but now let's take a look at the word plague. The word plague means to whip. Mm -hmm. It means to scourge. It's a metaphor for disease suffering. Now, it means to whip. Judgment begins at the house of God. Now, we need an understanding of exactly what does the Bible mean by whipping. Let's go to Acts chapter 22, and we'll go down to verse 24, and I'll show you another definition for, whip, for whipping. Acts chapter 22, and we'll go down to verse 24, 
And this really surprised me when God led me here. Um, watch what happens. Acts 22, verse 24. The chief captains commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. So God sees this plague as a scourging or whipping. And the Bible tells us that in the context of the word of God, that this scourging was an examination. For what reason? That he might know wherefore they cried so against him. The reasons for the examination. Watch what happens now. So Israel is locked in Egypt. And I'm getting ready to come to a close on this session. The question is, what was God saying to the nation? Go to Exodus chapter 12. Let me show it to you. Exodus chapter 12. And here's where the foundation for our discussion over the next few weeks um, will absolutely emanate from. It'll absolutely come from this place in Scripture. I want you to go down to verse 11 and watch what happens. All right. Exodus chapter 12, verse 11. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you a memorial. Watch. So has it ever occurred to you? If judgment begins at the house of God, as God is asking his church in this season, that is both an international season for people and for the church, that God is asking the question, this question, who are you going to choose? Now, the first thing we have to figure out is why does God need to ask his church, who do you choose? It's in the Bible. Now, watch what happens. I know there's some confusion, and I know a lot of prophets, friends with many of them. But if you're anything like me, as I listen to a dozen prophets, I got 12 different explanations as to the season that we're in. But the Lord God tells us in his word in Exodus chapter 12, that what I'm doing now, you need to set it up as a memorial, something you remember, something you can refer to, something that will help you interpret the times going forward. A memorial was not just a statue or something rigid without life, but a memorial actually was there to commemorate a time, but also help you remember what God had done in the past so you have a sense of what God is doing right now in your life. So here we go. Here comes, here comes the death angel coming through Egypt. And God does something remarkable that really, really blew my mind but caused me to ask a question. Why in the world would God need to have the houses of his people marked in Egypt so that the death angel would pass over them. In other words, why did God have to mark his people's houses so the angel would know the difference between them and the Egyptians? Is it possible that in an atmosphere of reason that the people of faith have begun to drift further and further away from faith and over to human reason. In other words, has the brand, had the brand of God's people, is the brand of God's church today so watered down and so diluted that God is telling us through his word, I'm having a hard time telling the difference. So the houses have to be marked, the people have to gather together in them, and they're there to rehearse the testimony or their legacy or their experience with God. So look at this scenario. Death angels coming through, God says, mark the houses so I can tell the difference between you and an Egyptian. Amazing. So my, my brand as a Christian is so diluted. My brand as a house of God has become so diluted, trying to be relevant, that in the eyes of God, I have become irrelevant. Why? Because relevancy with God is fulfilling the need that God has for you. 
So he has things he needs us to do. So my relevancy cannot be measured by my relevancy to other human beings. My relevancy is measured by how I am uh, performing my assignment with God. So as I bring this to a close for this first session. So in this session, God is saying, I want my church back. I want my obviously bloodstained church back. I want them to come out of hiding. They're dressed not to die. They're dressed for the next dimension of their lives. They're dressed for their future. So God has not allowed this plague to challenge the church. Watch this, because the church would not have chosen this moment. So we are in, my brothers and my sisters, an arranged marriage. You know in an arranged marriage, the bride did not have anything to say about who she was marrying. God has married us to this moment because he wants us to make a declaration, whom will you serve? He wants us to become distinct again. And how are we going to be distinct? We become the obviously bloodstained church that he always wanted us to be. I need you to write me. Tell me what you thought about this message. Comment, share it with your friends. And thank you for joining me for the very first, for the inaugural message of Pandemic Perspective with Bishop David G. Evans. The practical, the positive, and the prophetic. I'll see you next time.